Hi everyone, it's Luke from Cocos. In the previous video, we knew, we learned all about rendering on a 2D flat surface by just drawing something directly on the screen. The content of the drawing is relatively simple, but in 3D games, we consider a lot more things. For example, there are many characters in the people's field of view, and each character model needs to be drawn. How to lose focus on these objects is if they're distant from the camera, or building many stores with glass windows on both sides of the street. How do we see inside those glass windows? To achieve the functionality here, the last stage of our rendering process, alpha testing and blending is involved. In this stage, the GPU's main job is to operate on a fragment by fragment basis and to combine these colors in some form to get the final pixel color on the screen. There are two main tasks involved, testing and merging of the fragment, and the test, test step determines whether or not the tessellations will eventually be displayed. The main tests in WebGL are crop test, transparency test, stencil test, and depth test. And these tests are highly configurable. Among them, the crop test is not as flexible as the template test. Therefore, we will not cover the crop test in this video. The entire testing process is shown in this figure above. For the diagram, you can see that the color buffer output from the fragment shader is not the final color buffer in the screen. It must be effect affected by stencil, depth, and blending tests to get their final color buffer for output. This video focuses on the application of depth stencil testing in Cocos Creator 3.0. Let's start with some knowledge about stencil testing before talking about other tests. Let's first start talking about the template test. So. The core of the template test is to hold a template buffer. Each pixel or fragment has a stencil value. Usually each template value is 8 bits. It has a value re a range of 0 to 255, which means that there can be 256 different values. This allows us to discard or, retrain or retain a fragment by setting the template value we want. A simple example of a template buffering is shown above. Normally, when the user enables template caching, we'll set the template value to zero for all segments in the entire template buffer, thus discarding all fragments. Then the region-specific template value and the comparison functions are set, and then compares the value with the template value at the location in the template buffer according to the comparison function. Then the value is compared to the template value of the position in the template buffer. The final decision is whether to keep or discard the fragment to create the skeleton also known as the mask effect. Two important methods in stencil testing are stencil funk or stencil op. A stencil funk is used to control how the stencil is tested and get the test results. The stencil op determines what to do with the data in the cache based on its results. So let's look at stencil funk. It takes three parameters. The first parameter, funk, specifies the template test comparison function. We'll talk a little bit about this later when we finish the remaining two parameters. The second parameter is ref, which is used as the reference value for the template test. And the third one is the mask, which specifies the operation mask. When testing, the ref and the mask are first combined, and then the ref and the value in the template buffer. Finally, the results is based on the comparison function. All the comparison functions are shown on this figure. The default comparison function is always, which always passes the test. Of course, you can always choose never to make the comparison always fail, or you can choose other comparison methods, such as pass when it's less than, or pass when it's not equal to, etc. The commonly used method are shown in the figure above. The reason for using hexadecimal in this case is that the data is represented in the computer in binary form. But binary is too long to write, so it can be solved by using hexadecimal or octal. The larger the number, the shorter the expression length. This example configuration means that the reference value 1 of OXFF are calculated together, and then compare with the calculated value of the template buffer, template buffer and OXFF to determine whether the former is equal to the latter. If so, the template test succeeds or otherwise it fails. I just want to simplify and compare the reference value with the value in the template buffer. So mass can't be an interfering factor. So it is set to 0xff, which means that in the binary terms, each bit is 1, with the calculated value will remain the original value. If you want to disable the template, you can also set the mask to 0x00, so that the values in the template buffer are always 0. After the stencil func function, we know whether the template test passed or failed. Then we can manipulate the template buffer. We need to use stencil op. And stencil op takes three parameters. The first one is fail, which specifies the behavior of the current template test if it fails. The stencil test operations are as shown as in this figure. The default is keep, which is to keep the current value in the template buffer. If zero is selected, then all the values in the template buffer are set to zero. 
if you choose replace, then set the value of the template buffer set to the comparison value of stencil func setting ref. Next, let's look at the second parameter, Z fail. It's the behavior that specifies the current template test through the depth test. It has the same allowed and default values as fail. And the last one is Z pass, which specifies the behavior when the current template test passes and the depth deep test also passes or the behavior when the current template test passes or no deep test is turned on. Also, the allowed and default values are the same as fail. Here's something more understandable. Usually we keep the current value when it test fails, that is, keep. When the test passes, we replace the template buffer value with the set value, that is, replace. Template testing is disabled by default in WebGL. You need to turn it on manually when using is also enabled by gl.enable. You also need to clear the stencil BF buffer before each frame is drawn. Originally, there was only one color buffer bit. Now we need to add a stencil buffer bit. As a side note, if you want to write your own template test on WebGL and encounter a situation where the template test does not work, you can check it with when requesting the context, whether there's a request containing a template buffer. Next, let's look at the next knowledge point, which is the depth test. Something very important. Depth test is an essential part of 3D games. It helps to achieve the oculation of objects in 3D re rendering. Without the depth test, it may result in misrepresentation or flickering on the front and back objects. The core of the depth test is similar to the template test. It also holds a depth buffer. And the depth buffer, like the color buffer, stores the depth value of each fragment, stored as a 16, 24, or 32-bit float. The default precision is 24 on most systems. When the depth test is turned on, the depth value of the each currently rendered fragment is tested against the contents of the depth buffer. If the test passes the depth buffer, then the new depth value is updated. If the test fails, the fragment is discarded. The depth buffer is run after the fragment shader. Also, after the template test runs in space, screen space, screen space coordinates are related to the gl.viewport setting. WebGL will directly use GL's built-in variable GL frag cord directly from the fragment shader to access this. X and Y coordinates from the GL frag cord that represents the screen space coordinates of the fragment. It also contains a Z component. This is used to store the true depth value. It is eventually used to compare with the contents of the depth buffer. And the depth buffer also has an important function, depth func, which takes one argument. And the parameter is used to set the depth comparison function. The parameters of the comparison function are the same as those used in the comparison function of the template buffer. The default parameter is less. The depth test is also disabled by default, so you'll need to enable it manually. It is used almost uh, the same way as a template buffering. When the depth test is passed, the Z value of the current fragment is stored in the depth buffer. The Z value of the current clip is value between 0 and 1. The Z value of the object in the scene as seen from the observer's perspective. The value is the result of the projection matrix, and the standard device coordinates are changed. The value is based on a value between 0 and 1. And based on the above, I believe you should study more to understand the principles of template test and depth test. Next, let's try how to apply this part in Coco's Creator. Coco's Creator initializes templates and depths by default. The implementation module is a WebGL slash WebGL devices.ts module in the engine source code. Since I'm testing with WebGL1 backend here, I'll look at for how it works in Coco's Creator. To do this, go to the folder resources, 3D, engine, Coco's, core, GFX, WebGL, and then WebGL devices.ts module. Okay, now let's look for innate states. Here, all the initialized states are listed. Although the API section differs slightly from what we said before, this is because the WebGL provides more than one way to set. But the concept is basically the same. The default configuration listed here are mainly 3D objects. Since most 2D objects contain transparent pixels, so the underlying 2B pipeline doesn't handle the depth part. This eliminates the need for depth testing. As you can see on the previous 2D effects, like built-in sprite, the depth text section are manually turned off. So, in the next practice of depth testing, uh, template testing, we use 3D objects. Then, we try to test the depth correction correlation by placing two models in the scene. I directly use the scene of the previous project here, including the people and the backgrounds behind it. Next, let's find the position of the camera.
From the camera's illumination position and the cru- uh, camera's preview screen in the bottom right corner of the scene editor, the depth value of the character module is smaller than the background model, so it displays in front of the background model. Next, we can try to make the same configuration changes in the depth test. For example, turn off depth test. This time, you'll, let's see if the model is still displayed like this. As we know in the previous section, turning off the depth text uh, requires a change in the depth stencil state configuration. For example, let's look at the sprite effect. Here is the configuration of the depth stencil state, but the configuration here is the initialization configuration. Even if you modify it, it won't work on the material you've created. The way many young developers would like to do this is to modify it through code. This is one of the ways. The other way is definitely to modify it through the editor. So the editor must have provided an entry point for the modifications in the um, material panel. Below the material panel, there is a pipeline property. All the devs and template task configurations are under the property. There is a corresponding configuration entry. Then we find the depth stencil state. You can see it's configured related to the depth test and the stencil test. Then we can try to find the material of the model and try to turn off the depth test. The moment we turn it off, we see that the performance immediately goes wrong. In the depth the case of the depth test, because the depth of the clip behind the background is lower than the character model, so the part of the clip is removed. Now the model has no depth, and the depth of those clips are filled by the background model. Therefore, the current phenomenon occurs. From the performance, it seems to be the same as the depth on. The effect of choosing greater for the depth test function should be the same, because the, depth, the default depth test comparison functions is less, which means that the depth values with de- small depth values can be written to the depth buffer, thus eliminating fragments that are higher in this depth. Now, Grader will write the larger depths to the depth buffer so that the fragments with smaller depth values are eliminated. By definition, if we only have two models, then the effect should be the same. So let's see if it is. At this point, you'll find that no matter how you change the angle, you cannot see the character model. Normally, the background model is still less because of the depth test function, so it'll overwrite the depth buffer content. But now, all of them can be covered. Then the places not covered should be written to the depth value of the character and not completely invisible. So why is this? Well, this is mainly because we do the operation of clearing the depth buffer every frame. The depth val- the default value of the clear depth buffer is 1.0, which is the maximum depth value. So the character model can't be farther away than the maximum value. So that explains why we can't see it now. So when the character did not have the depth test enabled before, it will be removed because the depth test failed. So there is a part that can be seen. Though such a small test, we can update and verify the knowledge we have learned. I think it's quite interesting. After practicing the depth deep t- uh, the de- depth test, let's practice the next template test. I'm going to revert all changes here. The template test requires two basic operations. One is to clear out all the fragments. One is to set the template values for a specific area. Then the object needs to be drawn. Just choose to draw on a specific template value. I'm going to implement an effect that only shows the upper half of the human model. Let's prepare two faces. First, create a faceplate called clear. This is mainly responsible for clearing the template values. Next, I'll create another one for setting the template values. Let's name it Pass. Then adjust its size so that it only shows the upper half of the character. And then adjust the faceplates for clearing so that it completely covers the character. Then create two materials called Clear and Pass. These two materials use the same effect as the clear pass effect. Both are built-in standards. Next, associate them to the corresponding models. Next, let's work on clear. Set the stencil buffer to zero for the area it draws on the screen. Before we set it, let's look at the meaning of these parameters. 
So let's look at the first three parameters. The first three are related to the depth test. The first one is whether to turn on the depth test or not. The second one is whether to allow depth test writing when the depth test is passed. And this is also relatively easy to understand. And the third is to depth test comparison function, which we had been mentioned before. Later on, the section of the template testing is divided into front and back. The front side has a stencil star front in its name, and the back has a stencil star back in its name. Uh, the meaning is the same, so we only talk about each side. And as to why there is a front and a back, uh, this will be discussed in the second extended video in the face rejection section. Uh, further down is the stencil test, stencil funk, and stencil fail op. Uh, stencil Z fail op, and stencil pass op, and stencil ref. Uh, though these are described in the previous GL stencil funk and stencil ops discussions, so we're not going to repeat them. Let's just talk about the stencil read mask and stencil write mask. Stencil read mask is a mask that specifies the template test operation. This test is the same as the mask we understood before. It compares the ref and the mask with the calculated value according to the comparison function, stencil write mask. Stencil write mask specifies the mask setting after the template test is passed. It writes the values of ref and write mask to the template buffer. Next, let's configure clears template buffer. One of the most important features of the template buffer is that it sets all template values to zero. So at this point, we can choose to set the template uh, comparison function to never, which will never pass the test. At this point, we can set the, function, the stencil function op to zero uh, so that the template values in the clear coverage area will be zero. Next, set the template test to configuration for pass. The purpose of pass is dissimilar to clear, except that the template values that need to be set is defined by us. I wanted to define it as one here. The template comparison function is still set to never, so this it won't pass the test. At this point, we set stencil fell op to replace. Stencil ref is set to one. This way, the stencil values in the area covered by the pass will all be one. Finally, we set the stencil test value for the character. The character stencil test requires that only segments with a stencil value of 1 are passed, but does not update the values in the template cache, so we turn on the template test. Set the comparison values to equal. Uh, this keeps the existing configuration intact regardless of whether it succeeds or not. Ref remains at 1. At this point, we can clearly see that only the upper half of the character is displayed. The area shown is exactly the area blocked by the pass. This is how the template is tested. So let's try adding another pass sheet, so that it only shows the lower half of the person's body. Set its ref value to 2 and see the effect. You can see that the ref value of pass 2 is 2, so the lower half of the character is still not visible. At this point, we can also change the ref value of the character to 2 to see the effect. At this point, we can see that different template values can be used to display different effects. The above content is above, about the template test and the depth test. Interested developers can add more combinations to achieve special effects. In the next video, we'll continue to explain the mix testing and culling. So, we'll see you in the next video.